Good morning. Uh, thanks for uh, being here with, with us. Um, I'm Dr. Gutierrez. We're going to start doing uh, um, a lot of Q&A, talk a little bit about uh, myself, about the surgeries, and if you have any questions, we're going to be uh, answering them. So we're right now at the, at the new facilities. We're, um, we're about to, to open soon. Um, very beautiful. So, so a little bit of talk about myself. I'm, uh, I'm a bariatric surgeon. Uh, double certified. Um, I did uh, my studies here in Mexico. Uh, it was a total of 12 years. I'm just, uh, we're arriving from Naples, uh, Italy. We went to the International Congress, the IFSO International Congress. So we're continuously updating our studies and uh, to provide a better uh, care for you. Um, so um, I've been in the company in, in, in NBC almost 10 years now. Um, um, it's been a while, so so we're um, we're well. Hopefully, we start the new facilities and and give more um, better health care to all of you. So I think we are ready to start with the uh, with the uh, questions, uh, questions and answers. Just gonna read it in another form. Okay. So this is our, our first um, Facebook Live, uh, so we're gonna be doing more. So, so hopefully by the time we, we get better and, and, and faster with, with all the, the comments and, and Q's and A's. I'm just, I just uh, I'm arrived from the, from the hospital. Uh, today I did a, a surgery, it was a revision surgery a uh, patient uh, that previously five years ago had a, a gastric sleep patient started regaining uh, a little bit of weight but ha had a lot of acid reflux so we converted into a gastric bypass uh, during surgery we found out that the patient had a big hiatal hernia so we repaired that as well and we converted into a gastric bypass so so i'm just arriving from there and, and uh, everything went good okay uh so so uh, to start with the questions, I have a, a several questions down here. Uh, the first one is, um, how many incisions uh, will you make to do the surgery? So the incisions uh, depend. Um, normally we do laparoscopic surgery. So one of the advantages of, uh, of laparoscopic is that we do very small incisions. Uh, the biggest one is less than half an inch. It's one centimeter. The other ones are half a bit. So, so it can barely show. It's just a line. We normally we can do up to five incisions depending on, on, on different factors. Sometimes we can avoid doing one or two, so it could be three to five incisions, small incisions. Uh, the factors that are gonna depend uh, for once is the, the liver size. So we have to do a liver retractor when the liver is too big to, to lift it up. And, uh, and the other one could be depending on the amount of fat tissue inside. So we always try to do the less possible, but to be a safe procedure, obviously. There's other, uh, another choice as a uh, single incision. Uh, so this is one incision through the belly button. So this is more mostly for aesthetic uh, reason and you have to accomplish some different uh, factors, criteria, but it's a, it's a, a good option as well. Um, another question, does it matter if I had a hysterectomy previously? Uh, no, it doesn't matter. If, obviously, if you had previous surgeries, we, we can find a little bit more scar tissue, but uh, but no problem. We, we do a lot of patients that previously they had hysterectomies, so, so there's, there's no problem. Um, okay, a patient I have surgery. Okay, had surgery with me, so, uh, so glad to, to see you, hear from you. So, I don't know, I were, um, Okay, another question, will the uh, single incision uh, sleep um, will increase my belly button size? Sometimes we have to do it's just one incision, but it could be, it's a bigger incision. Normally, it won't. It won't increase the size of the belly button. But, uh, but sometimes because of inflammation, because of healing, uh, every, every uh, person heals differently. So you could have a, the, it, could, it could change a little bit of form. But, uh, but that depends on, on different factors. Um, taking care of it if it doesn't have any infection after so 
Um, have another question here. Um, question uh, from from Melly. Hello. Uh, what if I have a hiatal hernia? Um, hiatal hernia it's common in pay in uh, person that are overweight. Uh, hiatal hernia. Hiatal hernia is an internal hernia. We have the diaphragm. It's a muscle that divides the thorax from the abdomen. So we have some some special openings, normal openings for structures to pass. One of them is the esophagus. Um, when that um, that hole, that small, that normal opening increases in size, it's called a hiatal hernia. So what happens is that the esophagus pulls the stomach through into the thorax, so causing most commonly acid reflux. Some patients don't have uh, symptoms, but the most common is to have acid reflux. Whenever we do a restricted procedure like a gastric sleep. Um, pressure inside that small stomach that we're gonna leave is gonna increase. So um, acid reflux could, could worsen. So it's better to, if we go inside and see if I had a hernia, it's better to repair it, to dissect, repair it, because uh, if not, you can you can develop acid reflux after. So so normally what we do is that we repair it. Okay, a patient, a previous a former patient of mine, okay, I did a bypass on April uh, 28. You're down 60 pounds, so, so congratulations. So you're doing good. Um, it's very, very important to, to know, I tell all my patients uh, that surgery, every type of surgery is an excellent tool, but it is still a tool. You have to make some changes. You have to be mentalized that you cannot learn to eat the proper way back again. And uh, yeah, you have to, to, to take care of yourself. Um, but if you follow the indications, you'll do good. So normally we see that obesity takes like 10 years from your life. So doing this is trying to regain those 10 years and live it with the best quality of life possible. So um, another question is, is the draining tube necessary? Um, a draining tube is, um, normally we use it, there are a lot of centers all around the world that are avoiding using it, sometimes we have a very clean surgery and normally we can leave it, we, we doesn't need to, to leave a drain, but uh, we still prefer to take all measures. Uh, the drain could cause a little bit of discomfort, uh, normally in, in case of a sleep we leave it just one day, but if we were to have an active bleeding, and we have the drain, we can see it at the moment. So we can start giving special medication, special treatment, and it's better that if you don't have a, a drain, we still have to wait until you have pain, vitals drop, do a CT scan. So so in most of the cases, we prefer to, to just leave it one day, and the next day we take it out. It doesn't have any problem. Okay. Um, Another question is that will the gallbladder or appendix be removed during surgery? Normally, we don't remove it. Um, in case of uh, in case of gallbladder, um, we can if the patient wants to or if they having some problem, we can take it out. In this case, because um, any condition that makes you lose weight fast, uh, like like um, bariatric surgery, could develop gallstones later on. We found out that it's up to 30, 25 to 30% of the patients. So back in the 80s, 90s, it was a, a, a recommendation that when you do a, a bariatric a procedure, you had to take the gallbladder out as well. Right now we see that it's not necessary. We just recommend the patients that do a follow-up with their doctors. Some patients, they've been having some problems or know they have a, um, a gallstone. So in that case, we can, we can take the gallbladder out as well at the same time. Um, okay, another question. I have a, a, a sleep to bypass revision schedule. Oh, it's a, a patient. Recently, one of the pay, of the surgeons said that mini bypass is recommended for a revision patient. Um, can you elaborate why should I consider changing my surgery? Okay, so in case of um, gastric bypass, we have uh, different techniques. Now, FDA, um, like 10 years from now, approved the mini gastric bypass. So the RMY and the mini gastric bypass are a type of gastric bypass with differences in the technique. Both of them are, have uh, excellent results. Um, we can say that the results are the same. Um, the only thing we, we need to find uh, special uh, uh, conditions that you have. So if a patient previously had severe acid reflux, it's better to do a RMY, a RMY. 
If not, we can, we can do a mini gastric bypass or it should be called a random anastomosis gastric bypass. So it's a good option as well. So uh, by the time that you're here and we, our, our surgeons talk to you, so we, we because of your background, we found the, the, the specific surgery that's, that fits, that better fits you. So, um, another question, uh, what concerns are there with a three hour flight home? Um, normally a, a three hour is not that much of a problem. We recommend patients to, um, to carry their, um, their uh, sockets, so to put them back on. You just uh, tell the flight attendant that you had surgery, so like every hour, if you can, just walk back and forth the aisle. That helps. If you're in the, in the airport waiting, just walk a little bit, have a bottle of water with you, so you can be taking small sips of water the whole time. Um, in case of the flights that are a long time, uh, for example, there are some patients from New Zealand that sometimes are 16 to 20 hours flight. So in those cases, we recommend and we prescribe a blood thinner. Uh, three hours is not that bad, um, only that if you have pre previously uh, had problems with, with clothing, blood clotting, but normally it shouldn't be any problem. Um, okay, another question, why is it slower, uh, a slower loss from sleep to mini bypass? Uh, maybe this question is, why are revision surgeries a little bit uh, the weight uh, loose is a little bit slower. Normally, the first bariatric surgery that you have, um, your your body, your whole body, hormones, uh, enzymes, they shift into into a healthier you, so you lose weight very fast. Um, the body, at by time, has some some mechanisms because the body will the body is made to not to throw food, not to throw calories, not to throw our energy away to absorb it. So it finds, finds a way. So that's why patients can start regaining weight or not losing it anymore. And uh, with a revision, the body, well, your body has the, this, this adaptation. So you're still gonna lose weight if you follow the indications, but it's a little bit slower than the first surgery. So you just have to keep that in mind. But you, you'll get there, you'll see. Um, Okay, another patient that I, I said, I'm having surgery with you on Tuesday. I'm so nervous, um, so I'm, my, my sleep is, is affecting, is affected. So obviously, well, it's normal to be a little bit anxious, nervous. Um, even some patients, a lot of patients, it's their first flight, so that creates more anxiety. But that time that you get here and you get to speak with all the co coordinators, all the staff, uh, that we're we're like a big family family down here, so we our job is to to take care of you and uh, if, make you feel as comfortable as possible. So so we'll see you. Um, okay, another uh, former patient. I had a mini bypass with you on July 18. Uh, I had a hernia removed, doing great, down almost 15 pounds. Old. So congratulations. So. So you're doing great. So just follow the, the good work and and glad to, to hear from you. Um, how long do we check our vitamins? I think this is uh, after surgery. So normally we recommend to continue your uh, doing a follow up with your primary care doctor. If you have a nutritionist, that's always best. So at first um, we are gonna do a, a, a blood work. Uh, the first couple of days, the first month, then the two months, and then every six months uh, until your doctor can say that yearly that you can do that. Only if you have some problems, we can do that uh, more often. Um, another question, will my stomach stretch after sleep? So normally, well, the stomach is mostly muscle. It has two layers of muscle. So after surgery, it could grow a little bit. But just a little bit, not, not that you're gonna, that your stomach is gonna grow all the way back again. Um, it could stretch a little bit. You can, well, at first, two gulps of water and you're gonna feel full. By the time you're gonna, you, you can see that you can feel a little bit more. Um, but, but this is, this is changed by uh, help with nutritionists and by eating properly. But it could stretch a little bit, but doesn't do much. What we do is that we, um, well, we staple the stomach 
Um, we leave a lot of uh, small staples, titanium staples, and what we do is that we over sew the line of staples. So this sewing um, helps with the stretching, so it's going to stretch less than if we don't do a, a, a suturing. Um, oh. Oh, another former patient, I'm down 30 pounds. So, well, congratulations, excellent. You're doing an excellent job. Uh, so this is what you can tell that you're losing weight, but I imagine on the inside and, and outside, you should be feeling great and looking younger and healthier. Um, another question, how long will I be in surgery? Uh, this is uh, gonna depend on the type of procedure. Uh, for example, um, a gastric sleeve, which is the most common surgery, it takes like 40 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes uh, surgery. Uh, but the surgery is gonna be the same. You're gonna start doing, well, we take into the OR, we start doing some IV medications. You can feel completely relaxed at the minute, sleepy. You go to sleep, you wake up, so it's gonna be over. Uh, in case of a, a revision surgery or a bypass, it takes around two hours, three hours, sometimes depending on, on the type of surgery but it's gonna be the same. You just go to sleep and wake up. Um, another surgery, what is tested to see if you are anemic? Does it uh, go by your hemoglobin? Uh, yes, normally in every surgery we do a uh, pre-op uh, pre evaluation. So part of it is the blood work and in the blood work we do the, um, we check on hemoglobin levels, iron levels, um, red blood cells. So. Um, depending on that, uh, we have an internist, so it's gonna check completely uh, your blood work, uh, an AKG. Uh, uh, so to say you're good to go for surgery, or sometimes you need a special medication, or wait a little bit, or depending on that. But um, in most of the cases, we are able to to do the surgery. Only patients that are very very anemic, so we decide if we can do the surgery with the risk of having a, a blood transfusion more more often or to or to wait to give iron to give medication so um did you perform gastric balloon yes we do gastric balloon as well um normally well it has this indication gastric balloon is for patients that are have they have the, the the bmi not that big so it's in the in the in the borderline uh, six months, uh, we do an, an upper GI endoscopy to check if everything's okay. We put the balloon, uh, we give a diet, and then uh, six months, you return to take that balloon out. So normally the, the approximate weight loss is like 30 pounds uh, uh, approximate. and depends on every patient. Um, uh, another question, can I get a re-sleep in my pouch stretches? So this is a, a common question. Normally we see that um, Back in long ago, well, the, the gastric sleeve, uh, the first gastric sleeve was done in, the two ta in 2000. So uh, at first they, they, they left more stomach, uh, didn't do it quite well. Um, and right now, we, sometimes we go inside and we see a big, big stomach. So in that case, sometimes we can do a re-sleeve. But if uh, most of the sleeves are well done and just to, to cut it a little bit, the results are not gonna be um, as, uh, satisfactory. So in that case, we recommend better to do a revision, a conversion to a mini gastric bypass or to a bypass. So it's going to be long term and better results. Um, how do we follow up after surgery? So um, at the time of discharge, um, you're going to have a, a, a file with our phone numbers, our, our email, contact numbers. You're going to continue to uh, be followed up by, by the company nutritionist, uh, by the liaisons. And at any time, if you have any questions, so, so we're here via email or, or, or phone, so to, to be uh, checking on and do a follow-up on you. Um, when can I exercise beyond walking after surgery? So normally we recommend, we have some lift and restrictions after surgery, we want to avoid doing like heavy abdominal strengthening. So we recommend, well, start walking a week after, uh, swimming whenever wounds are closed, we recommend not to lift more than 15 pounds uh, the first three weeks and not more than 30 the first uh, uh, two months. So, so we start slowly, we want to avoid doing like, like abdominals, lifting yourself up. But other than that, you can start doing um, uh, light exercise and depending on how you feel. So we wait like, like two weeks and we can start doing it. Uh, does soda stretch my stomach? 
that's another question. Um, now that soda is kind of stretched uh, uh, properly, but, uh, but at first we recommend not to drink soda the first uh, six months because of the gas that can make you, uh, make you feel bad, have uh, nausea, vomiting. And, uh, and well, later on, later on you can do it. Obviously, we recommend to to lower it as much as, as possible. But uh, but no, not not that we can we can uh, say that soda can stretch your stomach by uh, per se. Um. Okay. How how soon can you shower after surgery? Uh, normally, you can do it uh, the day after if you're feeling uh, uh, good and 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 be help obviously. But, uh, but yeah, most of the patients there, they have a shower the day after, 24 hours after surgery. So, uh, and after surgery, normally they're walking two to three hours. Uh, depending on how they feel, some patients feel tired, they want to sleep a little bit. Some others are walking like nothing happens. So it's going to depend on how you feel. Um, okay, do you put stitches on the incisions? Yeah, we use a special uh, absorbable suture. So yeah, there are stitches. But they're gonna dissolve by themselves, so you won't have to go back to the to the doctor to the to the hospital. Just taking care of it, uh, cleaning clean them with soap and water, and they can dissolve by itself. Um, okay. Um, another question: Why do I need to stop NSAIDs? Um, can I never take NSAIDs again? Okay, so uh, NSAIDs are, are are a type of anti-inflammatory drugs that are very used. Uh, mostly in chronic uh, uh, diseases. So we recommend to stop uh, NSAIDs prior to the surgery because NSAIDs can um, create uh, um, bleeding as well. So, so we recommend to, to stop them, okay, uh, a, a couple of days uh, before the surgery and later on as well, a couple of days. Later on, you can be able to, to take all medications Obviously, in like an example, in the bypass, we need to, to take special cares on, uh, on taking NSAIDs. This is like a, a long time, chronic uh, time after. And uh, smoking is very important to, to decrease it or, or to stop it after surgery. But, uh, but you, can, you can have NSAIDs after. Uh, what is the difference between a uh, gastric bypass and a mini gastric bypass? Okay, so uh, the difference is mostly on the technique. Um, to explain a little bit, um, we have the, the stomach, we have our stomach, uh, we're gonna, in, the, in both of them, we're gonna cut the proximal portion of the stomach, we call it the gastric pouch, okay? So, in the second step, we go to the intestines, since the beginning, we count uh, like six to eight feet, it's gonna depend on every patient, and in the room and while we have the intestine, we cut it, we take the distant lip, bite it into that pouch, into the stomach, okay? And the other limb we bite into the same intestine. So it ends up looking like a Y, that's what's called our own Y or our own Y. Um, in case of the mini gastric bypass, we have that pouch a little bit uh, larger. We go and cut the intestine, but the difference is we do not cut the intestine down there. We take it as it is and bite it into the stomach. We call it an omega loop. So instead of having two cuts, two suturings, two staplings, you have just one, which is the, the proximal one that can be reachable. Endoscopy, and because of this, is less surgical time, 15 to 20 minutes. This is why it's called mini, because we take like 15 minutes. But it should be called one anastomosis gastric bypass, and the other one is uh, the R Y. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, when do I stop my medication? Well, this is going to depend on the type of medication that you use. Normally, we um, we encourage uh, patients when they fill out their uh, health questionnaire to put all the medication that they're taking. So we can say uh, that you can continue using this, you have to stop this the day before the surgery. Or if you're taking blood thinners, uh, some other medications, we stop them um, a couple of days or something, so a week after. Uh, does uh, BSG, uh, uh, medical sleep gastrectomy, affect ghrelin? Yes, uh, well, ghrelin is a, a hormone that's uh, mostly produced in the fundus of the stomach. It really, we have the, the photo down there. The fundus of the stomach is, is this portion, okay? The portion that we have. So, ghrelin is produced in some other organ, the pancreas, intestine, but it's mainly produced in the fundus of the stomach. So, when we do a, a BSG, a gastric sleep, we remove that, that portion, that, that fundus. So, ghrelin is gonna produce much less. 
And, and ghrelin, well, the function of ghrelin is to, when the stomach is empty, the stomach produces it and it goes into your brain and causes you that hunger, that binge eating sensation. So after taking that away, you're not gonna have those cravings, that, that eating sensation, that, that uh, binge eating. So, so yeah, it affects greatly on, on ghrelin. Um, okay. Uh, another question, will all gastric sleep patients require, require a draining tube? Uh, we have to decide, not all patients, uh, they, um, they need it, but, uh, but if we feel that it's better to leave a drain, it, the, we, we always put it on a scale, so the benefits are greater than, than not putting one and we can have some. But, uh, but yeah, if, you, if we have a clean surgery, no bleeding, patients are healthy, no other uh, diseases, so we can decide on not having a drain. Okay, how long before you can play golf? Um, so the same, normally what we want to avoid doing like heavy abdominal strengthening. So uh, I think golf, you should wait like a month, depending on how you feel and a month or two, but you can start uh, playing after that. And obviously return slowly. Um, what about if you have uh, PCOS? Um, PCOS is a, it's a, a common uh, um, disease related to, to obesity and overweight. So what happens and what we see is that, uh, well, PCOS, um, it makes it hard for a patient with PCOS to, to, to get pregnant. So after having this surgery, uh, PCOS is related to, to overweight. So decreasing overweight uh, makes your body um, decrease some hormones that are related to testosterone. So your body's gonna produce less. So patients, we see that patients uh, get rid of their PCOS and get pregnant uh, uh, better after having the surgery. So, so they have a better um, uh, a pregnancy uh, index so after surgery. So, so yeah, it helps with that as well. Um, okay, another question. We are only bringing a carry-on on the plane. Should all worry about my prescriptions as I'm taking home? Most of the medications that you take are gonna be uh, given in the hospital. Only uh, special medications that you, that you need, like for uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, sometimes antidepressants, or some other med med special medication that you take, it will be better to bring it with you. But, uh, but other than that, uh, medication for pain, antibiotic, anti-inflammatory, uh, uh, nausea medication, we're gonna give it to you here at time of discharge. Um, okay, another question. How will the incisions be closed? Staples or stitches? Normally we use uh, stitches. I was talking a little bit uh, prior. Uh, we use a special absorbable suture. So there are stitches and it's gonna dissolve by itself. So you won't have to take them to head back to the hospital to take them off. Uh, do a lot of patients develop GERD, uh, um, acid reflux disease, uh, after surgery? What are the odds I'll get it? Well, as I was talking uh, previously, any uh, restricted procedure like uh, uh, gastric sleep or, or the or lab band um, could increase pressure inside the, the, the stomach. So patients could develop acid reflux. This is less, a less percentage because most of the GERD is related to overweight because an overweight pressure inside the abdominal cap increases. So it's a, a constant pressure and you have acid reflux. So after losing weight, taking care of the diet, following indications, it's very rare that you can develop. So, some patients can, can develop acid reflux. So in that case, if you have a previous uh, a gastric sleeve and you have like bad acid reflux, we can do a conversion to, to a gastric bypass and that, that, that resolves the problem. Um, I read about dumping. If you eat sugars down the road, will this always be the case? Okay, so uh, dumping syndrome um, uh, is a, a syndrome mostly caused in malabsorptive surgeries like uh, um, gastric bypass. Um, you can still have it in the gastric sleeve, but it's very rare. This is a condition in the in the gastric bypass, we're gonna connect the intestine to the stomach. So when you eat, your, your, your stomach is gonna be small, so food is gonna pass almost directly into the intestine. So normally intestine receives the food pre-digest. 
So if it receives it as it is, and mostly when you take like a lot of carbs or protein very fast, or, um, the, the intestine doesn't know how to handle it. So it starts producing a lot of hormones and, and this could cause symptoms that cause um, um, uh, sweating, heartbeat increases, uh, even diarrhea, vomiting, even you can faint. So uh, even without any surgery, if you go and eat very fast, you can develop that. So it's just uh, know that you can have that, learn how to chew very well the food and not eating like a big portion of, uh, of carbs or liquid carbs uh, very fast. So, so it's not, it's not uh, that common, but it, it, could, it could happen, so you just have it in mind. Um, scale on, how, on 0 to 10, how bad is the gas pain? Well, um, as you know by now, uh, as you read, whenever we do laparoscopic surgery, this is all around the world, we need to create a space in the abdomen so we can see. So do, we do this by, by filling the cavity with gas, with CO2s and gas that we exhale. And when we finish, we try to take all that gas out back again. Always a little bit remains inside, so we have to wait for, for our body to absorb it, to take care of it, it doesn't do any harm. Uh, meanwhile, sometimes it could be a little uncomfortable, like a pressure sensation, mostly upper parts, left shoulder, that depends on every patient, and it's mostly at first. So, um, I say that most of the patients, it's not, it's not bad. Uh, we recommend to start walking, and that makes that gas come out faster. Sometimes, uh, some patients, they feel a little bit uncomfortable, uh, because even when you take a deep breath, it's a little bit uncomfortable. But we use heating pads, we use uh, uh, medications for that, and it's at first, so it, it, a couple of hours and you start feeling, feeling better. So I would say that it's not that much. Some, most, most of the patient, it could say a seven, eight, something less. Um, uh, another question, can we go back to gallbladder? Um, uh, uh, 54 years old woman, I'm not sure if uh, to explain it uh, once again. So, um, any, any condition, surgery, diets, medications, diseases that makes you lo uh, lose weight faster, develop uh, gallstones or could develop. So, we've seen that in patients that have bariatric surgery, like in 25% of the cases, they can develop gallstones in the future. So what we recommend is that patients to do a follow-up, keep checking with your primary care doctor, do an, an ultrasound now and then, and, uh, and if you have any problems, so you can do the surgery later on. But it's, 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 it's not that common. So just keep that in mind and do a follow-up. Uh, okay, uh, a question related. Uh, would you recommend to remove the gallbladder or wait and see later in life if, if it needs to be removed? So now the, the recommendation is, is to wait. Obviously, if previously you already have gallstones or you've been having pain related to that, so it's better to, to take the gallbladder out. But, um, but if not, we recommend to do a follow-up. Most of the patients, they don't have problems. But, uh, but if you do, well, you know, you keep that in mind, and you know that the, the, to correct that is to have a, a gall gallbladder surgery. Um, Okay, so we're just about to start. Okay, okay, so that was so. Um, we have some a couple of more questions, so we can wrap it up. Um, if we are currently receiving uh, chiropractic care, how long is the wait before we can resume after surgery? I think well, if you're having just a cons consultation or um, or uh, physical therapy, so if it's just a consultation, you can head back as 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 you head back home. If you're doing some physical activity that could involve doing like abdominal strength, we recommend, as I was saying, like two, three weeks. Uh, but your doctor knows and, and it's, gonna, it's gonna be following you and taking care of that. But yeah, uh, uh, most of the chiropractors um, um, are uh, sending the patients uh, prior to do a surgery because it has better results to lose weight first and do any um, knee back surgery. Uh, other questions? Uh, how soon can we have another surgery? I have sleep done uh, last October, uh, it was me, but I have only 16 pounds uh, lost and I want to lose more. So so yeah, normally um, what we recommend, well we know that the first year you're gonna, you're gonna lose weight, then you plateau 
and sometimes you, you lose a little bit more or, or you can regain weight. So sometimes if, um, well, if you showed you it was a year ago, and you started to see that you doesn't, don't lose more and you started regaining, so maybe we can decide and, and do a remission surgery uh, a year after. Okay, so uh, another question, what snacks can we eat on pre-op diet? So normally the pre-op diet is gonna, is gonna be sent to you uh, before the surgery. Um, what, we, what we recommend is not to uh, have a lot of carbs because part of the pre-op diet is to, to lose weight, to prepare your body for, for the surgery or, and to start this new way of life. So, so you can have, um, you can have uh, fruits, vegetables, anything that's healthy. Uh, like a normal diet that you can have. Well, this is pre-op. Uh, Post-op, we have some special uh, factors because you're not gonna be uh, tolerating food as well. And we continue on a special diet. The first week is gonna be uh, liquids and then we move on progressively. But uh, pre-op, it's like a, a, a any any diet. Okay, so um, so I think uh, this is this was the last question. So. Um, I'm glad that you have uh, uh, questions. Hopefully, I'll, I'll answer them, all of them, in a good manner. So, so thanks again for, for being here, for being here with us. Um, hopefully, I'll see you again soon with another Q, uh, Q and A. Uh, and well, have a good day, and hope to see you soon. <laughs> bye bye.